Welcome to Just Say This, the place to get all the help you need for the birds and bees talks. I'm your host, Amy Lang. Just a quick reminder, this show is for grown-ups because I'll be swearing. There'll be lots of swears, and then I'll also be talking about grown-up sex. I can guarantee that your kids do not want to listen to this, and they really don't want to listen to it with you. You've been warned. Do you have a question for me? Please give me a call. The phone number is 206-926-1522, 206-926-1522, and I will answer on the show. And if you have a funny sex talk story, please call in those as well, 206-926-1522. Thanks. Hello and Happy New Year. I hope you are feeling good and looking forward to 2024. Hopefully, I hope things are going to be good and people get indicted, person gets indicted for, I don't know, 91 different things. I mean, I'll take four, to be perfectly honest, and maybe knocked off of some ballots some places, which is already happening. So that's very, very good. And then also, I just am so, so hopeful that what happened with Roe v. Wade is going to get fixed in a variety of states because people are voting for the right things. There's a bunch of places where they're um, establishing abortion rights on the ballot. So if you're in one of those places, please vote. Please don't think that your vote doesn't matter. It totally does. And it's better than doing nothing. And my deal is that if you don't vote, you have no complaining rights. You do. You just shut up because you're not helping and you didn't do anything to fix it. Um, so anyway, there's that. And then there's one other thing, which is the craziness with gender affirming care and kids. What the hell? And I do want to give a big shout out to the governor of Ohio who researched. He said, I'm going to talk to families. I'm going to talk to both sides. I'm going to think about this. And he did it and he made the right decision. Now, you know what's going to happen is their ass wipes are going to do something to make it all go away. But I think one of the things I was talking to Carrie about this this morning because it's just so flipping outrageous. And I'm sorry, what percentage of the population has kids that are trans or need gender affirming care? I don't know. It's not huge. And again, no one's recruiting. But one of the things Carrie and I talked about is, you know, allowing your child and making sure your child gets medical care is a parental right. And he said, let's look at vaccines, right? That is medical care. Yes, some place it is, places it is absolutely required, and some places it's not. So if you're an anti-vaxxer, you made a decision about your child's medical care, right? The government can't really, you know, get in there. Well, they can, but you know what I mean. So this is a medical decision between the kid and the family and the doctors. It's the same thing. So anywho, that got me, you know, going today. And again... Happy New Year. But here's the other thing I wanted to talk about at the top. There's terrible shit going on in our world. I don't need to tell you what because you know what it is. And I haven't talked about it because what the fuck is there to say? Because it is all just a shit show. But one of the things that occurred to me is that in all of the talk and all of the worry about that and then homeless people and that whole thing, one thing I never see on donation lists or rarely is period products. There are people who are having their periods and are just bleeding, right? They don't have they toilet paper. Maybe they get paper towels. They don't have what they need. And so I just want to strongly encourage you, if there's a homeless community in your area, to, you know, if you're me and you're not making any blood anymore, I have tampons. Get the tampons. Get the pads. Go to the store with your human beings, your little human beings, and talk to them about Hey, these people need these things. There, there's a. They should be free. Um, just saying. Um, and I think in some countries they are. If anybody knows where that is, let me know so we can sing their praises. And anyway, so fuck peanut butter, fuck 
clothing, go buy period products. So in the show notes, there are a couple of organizations. One works with homeless and low-income women, and then another one is international. And they part of what they do is, I'm sure, supporting periods and that kind of thing. But they also do family planning. So when you get a list, like there's a situation in Tequila, which is near me, where there is this huge homeless encampment and somebody thank you, sent out an email requesting the real things they need, which involve like things like peanut butter. They don't need bedding or clothes. And she didn't include period products. So let's get on the bandwagon in your community, at your school, wherever. Collect period products and figure out where you can take them. All right, that is that for me in rant o -rama. Trying to think if there's anything else to report. Oh yeah, I am working with neurodiverse parent, well, neurodivergent parents, which I mean, nerd parents of neurodivergent kids, which guess what? Parents are also neurodivergent often. So I'm working on that. So keep an ear out for that whole project. I'll be teaching some classes and I'm creating a online resource center. And anyway, so I have discovered that there's a hole there for folks like you. So if you have questions about your, your ND kid, please leave them for the podcast and keep an eye on the show notes for, you know, stuff that's happening for me in that department. Um, okay, that is it. Oh, also, if you have a parent group, like a PTA or PTO, and you need a speaker, I do that. Like, maybe you didn't know that, but that's one of the big things that I do. And I am like 100% free and easy and sweary and whatnot when I do this because it's just where I get to be me. But when I'm working in groups like that, I am not like this. I'm still funny and I'm still casual, but the swears are really minimal unless I forget or I get really pissed off about something. Alrighty, so let's roll into our questions for the day. Hi, I have a question about uh, my nine-year-old daughter, well, about to be nine-year-old um, girl. She just continues to put her hands down her pants. She says her hands are cold. That's just, you know, where she wants to keep them. Um, she does touch her vulva sometimes when she's doing that, but not always. Sometimes she really is just holding her hands in her pants <laughs> um, to warm them up or whatever. Um you know, we always remind her that uh, if she needs to do that or she wants to do that, she needs to do it in private in her room. Um, and it's I, I think she just doesn't think about it. It's like absent minded, you know, how people twirl their hair or something while well, she just sticks her hands in her pants. And I I really do not know what to do or how to break this habit. Um, she knows that it's inappropriate. And I don't think it's like she's trying really hard not to do it and just can't stop herself. I don't think it's like that. I think it's like twirling your hair. I think she just doesn't even think about it. So um, what do I do about this? Please help. I think you might be right that what she's doing is just keeping her hands warm and she's in a habit, which, hey, why not? It feels good to have your hands down there. It is warm. And if you didn't know that then and you have a vulva, just right now, stick your hands down your pants. I mean, if you're in public, maybe not. But anyway, if you don't have a vulva, you can just imagine. And maybe you've been around a, vul a vulva. So, you know, hands down the pants feels really good in that department. Also, bonus, there's a little thing down there that feels good to touch. So the whole area feels good to touch. And you don't have to be full on, you know, self-pleasuring or masturbating to have those good sensations. So I think you're right about that. And, you know, I also think you're right about this twirling her hair thing. Like it's a habit. It's self-soothing. And it's also socially not okay. And I love the language you've been using about this is something to do in private, that kind of thing. But she's clearly in a pretty, a pretty deep habit with it. So a couple of ideas. First of all, when she's not doing it, that's the time to talk with her. Not in the middle of it. I'm going to give you a strategy in just a minute. Not in the middle of it, but when she is alone. So this is a good tucking in at bedtime night, at bedtime night, tucking in at night kind of conversation. And just say really simply, hey, I just wanted to touch base with you about the thing, you know, with your hand down your pants. You know that it you know, we feel uncomfortable when we see that. We've talked to you about it, that other people will feel uncomfortable and that at nine, you know, you're old enough to know to know that and also really to find another way to make yourself feel good and to warm up your hands because that's where she's really focused or really like letting you know what's going down. 
So you're going to be careful about being shamey, um, you know, tweak what I say, right, to make it more you and that kind of thing. But remember, really simple words, right? So keep it simple, keep it kind, don't look her in the eye. And don't say, you know, like, you know, it's not okay, people get embarrassed, like all that, just a little bit about people feeling uncomfortable. So then just say, you know what, I kind of think you're just in a habit of that. So why don't we think about some other ways that you can make your hands get warm that people won't feel uncomfortable about and then strategize. The big way is to sit on her hands, right? To sit on her hands, put her hands in her armpits. So give her a couple of options of what can, like hands and armpits is good, right? Right there, or, you know, desperation under the bum. Again, haven't we all done that? We've all done that. Um, Another thought, you might get her some fingerless gloves, or I have these really great glove mitt things. I got them a million years ago at, I don't know, REI. So they have their fingery, right? Their finger gloves, but they have a flap that comes over that makes them mittens. I totally love them. Um, So strategize about what she can do instead. And then the next thing is that uh, you do need to tell her that, honestly, just say, you know what? You're getting old enough now where kids are going to start to notice stuff like this. And they may start to tease you and it is really hard to be teased about something like this it's not okay but it is part of childhood and kids can be mean so i don't want kids to be teasing you and i don't want you to have to experience that so that's another reason to let's figure out what you can do to kind of keep your hands warm right then the last thing uh i would come up with a code word i'm a super fan of code words or a hand signal that when she's doing it, you just say mittens. Hey, you see what I did there? You say mittens and she'll and she'll practice. And you have to have her practice too. And you can say when you say, hey, let's have a code word mittens, we can practice in the morning. So give her the code word or let her come up the code word with the code word. It needs to be super simple. And then you've done that and say, thanks so much for listening to me. You know, I don't want you to feel bad about yourself at, at all because you didn't know, right? This is the kind of stuff where you should be able to do that and just be really calm, chill, reassuring, that kind of thing. And so here you have this deal that you're doing with her. So the next day say, hey, let's pra- practice the mittens thing. And so have her put her hands on her crotch, not down her pants, right? So let's just pretend and not in front of anybody else, right? So let's just pretend and she puts her hands down there and then you say, oh, mittens. And then she takes her hands out and puts them in her armpits. So have her do it like three or four times and then have her do it with you, right? So you do it and she mittens at you. That should help her to break that habit. And you may need to be, you know, I would also like watch her and she may do it at like like consistently at different times. So end of day, when she's tired, when she's bored, that kind of thing. So I would try that. It should do the trick. And then the other thing too, which you've already been saying is like, hey, you know, it's totally fine to touch your privates, but that is something that you need to do when you're alone. It feels really good. Totally cool with that. But, you know, time for the public thing to stop. All right. You do all that she doesn't stop, then I would, um, she probably needs a little support because it could be anxiety related and she's found this way to self-soothe. So maybe a little bit of a chat or two with a tune up with somebody that can help out with that behavior change. But I think this should do the trick. So be careful about shaming tone. Be careful about how you have the conversation. Pick your time. Don't do it in front of anybody else, just you and her Hi, Amy. My name is Lauren. I have a 10-year-old son, um, and he is neurodivergent, so I'm very happy to hear that you are um, working with kids who are neurodivergent now. That's awesome. So my son has ADHD, and he uh, struggles with impulse control, and part of that is um, he'll like to curse, and he'll also like, he'll say like the word stick or suck my dick or, you know, um, that's mostly, that's mostly it. And he'll just say it to get a rush kind of like that dopamine hit. And it's part of, again, the impulse control. I've worked with you before and he has been exposed to porn once a year or so ago. And we, uh, worked on that. We talked about that. We talked, we did all the scripts that you recommended, read, um, good pictures, bad pictures, um, apologized, you know, we did all the stuff that you recommended and it worked tremendously. 
but he still struggles with that impulse control. So I would love to know anything that you would recommend to do. We say, you know, no, that's not okay. Don't do that. Um, we've done consequences, but it, it, seem, it doesn't seem to really work. So uh, I'd love any out-of-the-box ideas because I feel like we've tried a lot. So thank you so much, Amy. Oh, yes, the neurodivergent ADHD child and the delight in blurting and saying words like dick and suck my dick, which that's not good. Dick can kind of get away with. But the good news is be happy he's not running around saying cock and suck my cock because that is big trouble on multiple levels, especially if somebody who is not you hears it because they're going to Double, triple freak out to hear a child say that. Dick, you know, is 10-year-old language. So here's a couple things. So first of all, I'm really glad that our consultation, my porn support, my porn talk support, oh, it sounds terrible, um, how it worked because that tells me that you can help him knock this off. So one of the things about ND kids is oftentimes they require a lot of repeating you may need to have multiple conversations with him about this to help him change his behavior. And I'm sure you've tried all the things. And it's very frustrating when everything you try isn't working. And a couple things. I'm guessing that he is loving getting the rise out of you when he does this. Like your whole body goes, God, Jesus, fuck, shut the fuck up, right? Okay, maybe not your body. But you're frustrated. You get He gets a rise out of you, which just feeds into that dopamine hit for him. So it's fun. It feels good to him. And they like to get us going. And because it's because they get our attention. Like they get our undivided attention. Kids don't care if our attention is good or bad. Adults do. But kids don't really care they just want to have our attention and he has picked this baby because it's working like a charm and there may be other behaviors he does as well that are the same thing and if you have other kids in the household they also are probably queuing into this and watching what's happening and hopefully there won't be a rash of dick conversations of dick blurting in your household but um anyway hopefully anywho so this is very much like what we just talked about with the mittens person and it's the same kind of behavior socially unacceptable can cause trouble get a lot of attention and not the right kind anyway what to do is the same thing find a time when he's pretty chill and have the conversation with him no eye contact at all so if he's in bed you sit on the floor go for a walk, rake leaves or something, don't have any eye contact with him at all. People with penises do better with that. And then folks with ADHD also do better with that. Keep it super duper duper simple. So you're going to really write down what I'm going to tell you to say. You're going to keep it short words, short sentences, so he can gather the information better. So don't do a lot of, and this is why it's not okay, because people feel uncomfortable and you can get in trouble and blah, 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 blah. So mind your, mind your words. And I would do basically the same thing. I would say, hey, we need to talk about this. You know it upsets me when you say and say the words when you say dick and suck my dick, period. It needs to stop. The reason it needs to stop is because you can get in a lot of trouble at school with other parents, with other adults, if you say these kinds of things, period. Don't say period. Then say, so... We need to figure out how to help you stop saying those words, period. Then you can say, what do you think? And see what he does with that. The next thing to say is, how are we going to do this? We can have a code word. I can remind you in the morning. I can have a consequence. What do you think makes the most sense? See what he does with that. So you want to give him a little agency, right? Hey, something went weird when I was recording, and so the last part of my answer to her question got chopped off. And if I sound a little different, that's because I have the cough that everyone in Seattle has right now. Anywho, so yes, he needs some agency over this. And he may push back at you. He may say things like, all the boys are doing it, all the guys do this, all the kids do this, it's super normal. And you can say, yeah, I know, I get that, but I don't want you to get in trouble, so that's the deal here. And then leave it alone for a little bit and 
after you all have figured out how you're going to handle it at home, it should probably calm down. Now, one thing you do need to do, and frankly, I can't remember if I said this already, and I'm not going to go and listen. Uh, if you haven't already talked with anybody at the school about this stuff, I would definitely do that because you all need to be on the same page. So if you come up with a code word or a signal or whatever, make sure the teacher knows that or whoever is sort of eyes on him most of the time knows that. Anyway, that's my answer. Uh, thanks for listening, and thanks for your patience while we're having technical difficulties over here but I have a superstar producer so she fixed it thanks see you later that's it for this week thanks to everyone who's been calling in the number is 206-926-1522 so please leave me a message if you have a question or a tale from the trenches And thank you to Melanie Smith, my producer, and to Rolf, who wrote the Birds and Bees and Kids theme song. 